one of the producers on Emergency was a man named Bob Justman, Robert H. Justman, and I'm a huge fan of Star Trek. I read a lot of science fiction books when I was a kid, and it wasn't often when I was uh, confronted with heroes in the pages of those novels who looked like me. So Gene Roddenberry's vision of the future was spectacular as far as I was concerned because it said when the future comes there's a place for you. So Bob Justman and I, during the course of the shooting of that movie, would sit around and talk about Trek constantly. Uh, flash forward a couple of years later, I get a call from Bob, and he says, we're over at Paramount, we're doing a new Star Trek series, are you interested? I said, is Gene involved? He said, absolutely. And I said, I'll be right over. Uh, it, it really didn't matter what the role was, I just wanted to be a part of that universe. Marina, in Star Trek Nemesis, um, you and John had a... Um, John. Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan or Johnny? Johnny, um, <laughs> pretending to be in the family old year when I'm not. Um, but, but you and Jonathan had a, um, a love scene, which was um, arguably perhaps one of the most sexually explicit and emotionally violent scenes in all of uh, the Star Trek franchise. Was that a difficult scene for the two of you? I think it was more difficult for me. Well, no, actually, maybe that's not true, because, um, no, because Jonathan was just in the nice, sexy bit, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so he enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> he was having a good time. Um, but no, I mean, when it changed into Shinzon and then, you know, the other creepy guy, um, that was, uh, any rape scene for, for an actress, I think, is emotionally difficult. Um, thank God, touching wood here, I've never been in that situation personally, but, um, it's scary, even when you're just acting it. It's very draining emotionally. And yeah, and because filming takes such a long time, you're in that situation for maybe four or five hours. And uh, yeah, I, I, needed, I needed a drink and a ciggy at the end of the day. <laughs> and all you children out there, don't ever smoke. <laughs> don't ever smoke, you don't get an autograph if you don't promise me you will never smoke. <laughs> The, um, the movie did not do as well at, at the box office as, had, uh, as it had been hoped to do. It's because it sucked. <laughs> it, did, it didn't suck as much as Insurrection. Paul's <laughs> I fell asleep at the premiere of Insurrection. <laughs> Well, Lamar, having said that, and then let me be perfectly candid too, I thought that the um, writer um, attempted to do his best to make it a next generation version of Wrath of Khan. Well, first of all, let me say that, that uh, John Logan is uh, an A plus, A plus writer in Hollywood, phenomenal writer, and, and he's a fan of Trent. And I don't think that um, the failure of that movie to deliver to the audience what we promised them was John Logan's fault. Or what went wrong? The director. <laughs> they hired a man named Stuart Baird, uh, who knew nothing. He, he didn't even watch a single episode of Next Gen before we shot this movie. And what did he call you he will, he will forever have a very special place in my heart because for the first six weeks he kept calling me Laverne. <laughs> Um, he, his philosophy, if you want to call it that, was that he, he um, wanted it to stand on its own as a Star Trek movie, not, you know, he didn't want the history of, you know, Star Trek to <coughs> impinge on it, but it doesn't work on Star Trek. There is a history, there is a legend, there are characters that have been around for 15 years and have, have, and have, have relationships. relationships with each other. And, um, and if you're going to ignore those relationships, I think it's the way these people care about each other and how that manifests itself in, in the action. <laughs> that... I mean, despite the fact that it was a sci-fi show, you know, ergo uh, action show, um, Gene always used to say, it's a people show. It was about the people it's on the ship. And um, he, he didn't 
really take that into account. I've heard uh, a little bit of chatter on the internet that apparently the next Star Trek movie is going to be yet another prequel set after Enterprise and yet before the original series. I'm not happy with the, that at all. You know, I, I want to see you guys back on the screen again. Yeah. How, do you, how do you guys feel about apparently the, 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 the decision makers at Paramount are, are done with next Trek? Well, first of all, I think there are new decision makers at Paramount now. And I don't think any of us in the cast feel like we had an opportunity to go out consciously. Um, I, I know that given the opportunity, we would love to give it one last hurrah. Yeah. What y'all, I'm saying y'all, because I'm in the South now. <laughs> what y'all don't realize is that it's you guys that have have a say in what happens next. Because if you inundate Paramount's website or whatever, it, if, if you make it known to the powers that be what you want to see, they won't make this movie about these kids. It's going to be kids, right? They're going to be going for this demographic thing that Hollywood is all about. And it'll be a bunch of like 20 year olds Exactly. It'll be like it'll be like the Wesley Crusher syndrome, except multiplied. <laughs> right? So you all have to do your bit. If you want to see us back, you've got to tell them you want to see us back. We don't have the power. We can't employ ourselves, right? So get your fingers out and start emailing and writing letters and doing all that. So I'll tell you this at least for the two of you, you you'll want to be back in the seat. And back in the saddle. I would still be, if Next Gen was still on, I would still be there doing it. He would, because he's a big time director now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to be nice and make a nice little bar to get a job. You know, <laughs> I, I'd well, hire you any day, Marina. <laughs> well, that's a nice segue into my next question. It is from a bar. Um, as a director, do you feel, and you mentioned Gene Roddenberry's uh, vision for, for humanity in a, in a previous answer. Do you feel that uh, Gene's vision of the utopian future for humanity has outlived its popularity uh, given the uh, enormous success of the new Battlestar Galactica and in a post 9 11 world? I think we need Gene's vision now more than ever. I was always struck by, by, um, by that, that phrase that Gene coined, idic. IDIC, infinite diversity and infinite combination. And what was inherent in the Trek philosophy was that there was respect for all of that diversity. And I, I think that you know the world leaders who are pushing the buttons on you know what's going on around the globe today could really take a page.